So the purpose of this video is to give you a quick introduction to Microsoft Power BI. Power BI is a tool that is surfaced through a web browser uh, and it allows you to connect data from lots of different sources and then to start to visualize that in different ways to really give you a, a very dynamic, in-depth view of your business information. So the example that we've got here is uh, a report that I've created around production volumes, etc. Uh, and what we'll do here is we'll just edit this page to go into a little bit more detail. So we'll edit the report um, and straight away you'll see that we've got a series of visualizations represented here. These are the ways that we can actually chart and choose to put the data onto the screen. And then I've got the data content itself. So here we're seeing things like breakdown hours, defect rates, efficiency rates, etc., that we may want to choose to put on. So what I've done here is just as a quick sample is I've put a few map-based charts and, and different charts of different kinds in place. Um, but one of the things to, to very quickly realize is that when we are clicking on content here, you can see the content within the different sections actually changing very dynamically. So it's very easy to explore the data by putting together many different charts onto a page that you can then dynamically click through. And they're all related. So as I select content, it will reflect in the other tables and charts that are on the page. Now, just to show you creating one from scratch, if I go to create a brand new page here, so we're starting off from, from blank, then what I can start to do is I can start to put the content that I'd like to draw onto here. So I might, for example, put the city on. Um, and it knows that it's a city, so it's got a geolocation, and it's basically straight away put that into a map form that we've got there. I may want, then want to put in things like, let's have a look at, um, maybe it's the sales value of output, so we can add that onto the charts. Uh, and I may want to do that, of course, by item group. So I can choose item group, and you'll see the pie charts then uh, changing accordingly. So this is integration with Bing Maps, very dynamic again. I can zoom in, zoom out, zoom out, look at the different areas and so on. Uh, and of course, it is completely global from that regard. So very good from a, uh, physically identifying where things are taking place. Now, I could then start to add extra content onto here. So let's think about maybe breakdown hours. Maybe I want to see those over time, so I could put a date on there. I'm just going to choose this option here, so we're looking at the date entirely rather than the date hierarchy to drill into. Uh, and you can see that I can very quickly put the chart on in that way. Uh, of course, if I want to change that view, I want it in a different way, then I can again represent that. If I want to put, again, maybe content about the city, the location of those breakdown hours, uh, then I can do so like, like so. Um, I could also then perhaps put some extra content onto there as well. So I might want to know um, number of health and safety incidents, for example, and put that into a pie chart form. Very simply, I'm just navigating through and just choosing the content that I really want to, to put onto here. Again, I might want to look at that by the site or location. Um, and maybe I want to then put on something about some other information. So maybe we want to put on... Um, some item group information and um, we want to look at our on-time production rates by item group and again we might want to see that over time so let's put a date on there as well so choosing all of the different content we want um, now again that might be better in some sort of charting form so choose the content that we're seeing and again I might want to just drag and drop things around here to, to change slightly the way that we're seeing things so let's put the date on that axis and let's put the item group back on at a legend. Okay, so we're very simply navigating around. Um, in this case, this is on-time production rate information. So what I should be really doing here, of course, is choosing the average of that to get a more representative view. Now, having done that, the, the way that the data is all linked together is still actually maintained. So I can still choose different areas, different factories, um, different types of product, etc., and see how the data changes around all of that content that I'm putting onto there. So it's as easy as that to start creating our own reports. Now, the other thing I can do is actually pull those reports together onto what's called a dashboard. So here, for example, I've got a production performance dashboard. I won't save the changes I've made there. Um, and you can see what we've done here. In fact, I can actually take this up to full screen size um, using the appropriate button. So here, basically, I've got a plan of the factory. Uh, I've got a way out section that's going into some mixing and cooking, and then I've got some cooling and then into a packing. But each of these have got yield information. So what I've done in this particular example is put what's called a key performance indicator uh, visualization on. So you can see here that our way out yield is actually pretty good. We're happy with that. But for the other different areas of the factory, then we have got some differences. 
factors and we have got some discrepancies that are taking place on the goods in I've also got some recorded losses being taken place as well so they're recorded uh, in these sections there Again, a couple of charts to the side, and I've also got some extra, uh, effectively, tiles that we're seeing on here. Now, with each of these, what I can do is, again, then drill down to the next level beneath that and start to look at maybe um, average on-time production rates. Very easy to navigate. Again, I can use this on different devices as well. So there are apps available, for example, on iPad, but you can see here it's nice and easy to navigate through um, to the different content that we want to, to reflect onto here. Um, again, efficiency rates, we can drill into that content as well. Um, back again, just showing a few examples as much as anything. And then defect rates, um, slightly different in this particular view in that what's got you've got taking place here is that we're, we're actually trying to put together information in multiple axes. So here we've got the defect rate at the side of the uh, the chart we've got the training hours against the bottom and we've also got the time that's being played out here um, the size of the blob actually means something as well in terms of the, the sales value I think it is in this case but you can sort of see that, that we can also trend this information and we can play that over time so we can look at see how things are changing so this is with this particular example what we're really doing is we're exploring the effect of training on defect rates uh, and working it that way but it's all about really choosing how you actually visualize uh, and put together this information so it's just a case of again dragging and dropping to create these types of views um, again just come back from there um, i'm back to our dashboard um, one other thing I just wanted to quickly finish off on here as well is just to say how you can actually search for information as well. So yes, we've got information presented on this dashboard, but I might actually want to know what is the average yield, for example. So it can go away to the data, it's context sensitive and it's, it's been able to grab that uh, and that's come back straight away saying 97.93 is my average yield. So that's not bad, um, but I might want to know um, what that is in packing for example and again it knows that it's looking for the production stages packing and it's gone away and found it and again I might want to say that's great but how's that changing over time so again it's just a case of typing in those things to do that this can also be integrated with Cortana as well so literally you can ask that question through voice um, and it will come back with a with an answer similar in a similar fashion to what we've just seen there so I hope that's been a bit of a, a useful overview uh, give you a bit of an insight into the capabilities of Power BI